everybody. This one is about dealing with alleged or secured alleged loans. Um, so there's a book called Modern Money Mechanics. It's a 40 page document published by the Chicago Federal Reserve in the 60s. Uh, this is the front page. And um, as you see at the bottom there, the arrow points to the Chicago Federal Reserve. Uh, it was written by this Dorothy M. Nichols, May 1961. Um, anyways, it talks about the money creation process which takes place principally through transaction accounts. And uh, that's where it talks about it right there. Um, the money creation process takes place principally through transaction accounts. That's on page two. And then on page six, it continues. And um, this is where I got it highlighted. And we'll look at the bank deposits, how they expand or contract. And um, this is the text right here. Of course, they do not really pay out loans from the money they receive as deposits. If they did this, no additional money would be created. What they do when they make loans is to accept promissory notes in exchange for credits to the borrower's transaction accounts. They do not loan money. There is no such thing as a bank loan. And now a little advertisement. Um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to click the bell next to the subscribe button so that you're notified when there's a new upload. And this is a, the uh, front page of my channel and the arrow is pointing to the little bell. Uh, if you click that, then uh, you'll be notified about new uploads. Uh, anyways, back to the topic at hand. Um, this is... Um, Title uh, 12, United States Code, Section 83, uh, loans by bank on its own stock. Um, no national bank shall make any loan or discount on the security of the shares of its own capital stock. Now, you have to understand that when anybody makes a deposit to a bank under the Uniform Commercial Code, it becomes the bank's property. So then that's their stock. It's an unsecured debt to the bank. That's true. But uh, the bank, uh, it still becomes the bank's property. They're in a contract to give it back. That's why the CDOs, the collateralized debt obligations, are such a scam. Because they take priority over the bank deposits. And nothing was ever loaned. Banks do not loan anything. There is no such thing as a bank loan in America or anywhere. When you sign the promissory note, you create the money. They deposit the promissory note into a transaction account, and based on that deposit, they cut a check. That's exactly what happens. They are not out one penny when you uh, uh, um, get a mortgage or a loan on your car or to buy a car or anything. They are not out one penny. Tom Schaff wrote a book called Banker's Secrets. Lists 160 questions that you can ask a CPA and an officer in a bank in court to prove they loaned nothing. They do not loan anything. This is um, Tiernan versus Jackson. Um, a, a U.S. Supreme Court case, 1831. An unconditional promise to pay is money. The case of Farmer versus Russell, so far as the point before us is concerned, asserts the principle that if A receives money from B to pay C, it is money had and reserved for the use of the latter and received for the use of the latter. In such a case, it is immaterial whether the promise to pay over be expressed or implied. For by the very act of receipt, the party holds it not for A, but in trust for C. And so, um, again, um, this is all going back to Roman law. This is another case. Uh, a cashier's check 
uh, differs in that it is a bill of exchange drawn by the bank upon itself and is accepted by the act of issuance. A cashier's check is the primary obligation of the remitter's bank. An ordinary check is considered as merely a promise to pay, but a cashier's check is regarded substantially as money which it represents. The gift of such a check is completed upon delivery of the check. Um, and so, anyways, that is found in, um, in uh, Crunk versus State Farm Casualty. And it goes on, it says that by reason of peculiar character of cashier's checks and their general use in the commercial world, they were to be regarded substantially as the money which they represented. So when you deposit money into the transactional account, the bank issues the cashier's check, okay, which is money. And the deposit that you make based on that is money. What is said to be an unconditional promise to pay for a certain, uh, a certain sum of money is itself money. The words on the face of the paper money will pay to the bearer on demand cannot alter its character as money and turn it into, into a different document which calls for the payment of money. And that's Bank of Canada versus Bank of Montreal, that's Supreme Court of Canada. And the reason I'm quoting a Canadian case is because this is all comes from England. And um, an unconditional promise to pay is money. It's all coming from the Roman cult, actually, from Roman law. That's the Supreme Court of Canada. And now another little advertisement. Uh, for great custom websites, domain names, and hosting, go to uh, uh, cubeyard.com. Um, and you can use this cube, uh, coupon code CY172 for 20% off of your first order. Um, and, uh, and that's a little logo. Um, so cubeyard.com uh, can do uh, websites, domain names, hosting, all sorts of stuff uh, in regards to the Internet. Back to the topic at hand. Um, so Tiernan versus Jackson is over a shipment of tobacco. Okay, this is all coming from the Roman cult is where it's coming from, is where it's coming. Roman law, which is a subset of canon law. Crunk versus State Farm Casualty. State Farm Fire and Casualty is over an insurance policy. Okay, well, a shipment of tobacco is, is admiralty. Okay, this is admiralty law, uh, which is a subset of, of uh, Roman law. Um, anyways, um, insurance is definitely Admiralty. Bank of Canada versus Bank of Montreal is definitely uh, Roman cult. Uh, the Tiernan case talks about it being a chose in action. Uh, Tiernan versus Jackson. They are either cases where there was an express promise to hold the money subject to an order to the order of the principal, or there was an implied promise to pay it over as it was received to the use of the particular person. In the case of Barr, no such irresistible presumptions exist, okay? This is all Roman law. Roman law works on presumptions. Um, a chose, okay? A chose is a French thing. Well, um, it's a thing, whether tangible or intangible, a personal article or a chattel. A chosen action is a proprietary right in personam, such as a debt owed by another person, a share in a joint stock company, or a claim for damages in tort. The right to bring an action to recover a debt, money, or a thing. Personal property that one person owns but another person possesses, the owner being able to regain possession through a lawsuit. And so, again, uh, that's Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. Banks, the bottom line here is, the absolute bottom line is, is that banks do not loan anything. The bank loans, all bank loans are full of fraud. Uh, uh, there are no bank loans. All mortgages are a fraud. The so-called federal debt is a fraud. There's no government debt. All foreclosures are a fraud. The so-called subprime crisis was a fraud. See Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3. Uh, and, and, and the uh, subprime crisis is a fraud. Uh, those are all videos that uh, are available on this YouTube channel. 
uh, the banksters are thieves. The U.S. Congress is bought and paid for by the bankster thieves. All so-called courts are bought and paid for by the bankster thieves. They operate exclusively under the Uniform Commercial Code. This is all coming from the United Nations through the Unconstitutional Unidroid Treaty and the Roman cult. Uh, so, an alleged loan, an alleged unsecured debt. Um, so we're talking about these alleged loans, okay? And, and there's alleged uh, unsecured debt, alleged uh, debt, whether it's guaranteed by the government or not. Um, in the worst case scenario, on some of these debts, like student loans, the IRS collects the debt and they do that through the tax return. Um, and the alleged debtor is always a U.S. citizen, a social security number, or in Canada, social insurance number, or in other countries, you know, I don't know, but it's all going to be similar. It all goes back to a cystic a trust under Roman law and the Roman cult. That's exactly what it is, always. Every taxpayer is a cystic a trust, having for sufficient interest in preventing the abuse of the trust to be recognized in the field of the court's prerogative jurisdiction. And uh, this is Congressional Record, June 13, 1967. And I keep getting people hitting me on this. And, uh, you know, I keep saying it, but people just don't get it. Uh, this is a summary of what it says on pages 15,641 through 15,646. Um, and uh, a citizen of the United States is a civilly debt entity operating as a co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the Public Charitable Trust, the Constructive Sesticate Trust of U.S. Inc. under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of the USA and U.S. Inc. Um, and... Uh, um, U.S. citizens, okay, it's a U.S. citizens, a fictitious entity, so it falls under the Commerce Clause, okay? So this is all commercial. That's the reason you're not allowed, you, you're denied due process. Uh, the right, the privileges and immunities of citizens of the United States do not necessarily include all the rights protected by the first eight amendments of the federal constitution against the federal government. The only absolute and unqualified right of a United States citizen is to residence within the territorial boundaries of the United States. Okay, that all falls under the Commerce Clause. And announcing another advertisement. Um, announcing a subscription to a, 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 a based YouTube channel called um, Sovereignty International. It's the recommended cost of the subscription. is currently at $1.99 a month because it avoids the advertising only. Originally, when I was setting up this channel, I was going to have exclusive content. But, you know, quite frankly, uh, the only power that these New World Order Satanists have over us is through fraud and deception, and my agenda is to expose it all for our benefit. And so the there's nothing that I can think of that I want to have exclusively on that channel that I don't want to make available for, to, for anybody for free. And so... Uh, but this channel will avoid the uh, the advertising, um, and uh, I'm currently publishing six videos a week. And some people have had trouble finding the channel, and so a link to it is at the bottom there of the screen. Um, and there's also a link to it at the top where you can see the arrow, the red arrow. And uh, some people have sent me $1.99 donations. Um, I'm guessing it was uh, so that I could uh, sign them up for the channel, and, and I can't do that. Uh, the only way you can uh, uh, get your subscription to the channel is by starting the free trial and and going through whatever process YouTube has set up. I don't know what that is. I've never gone through that process, so I don't know. And I cannot, I have no control over the subscribers. Um, the uh, uh, all, all I have is, is what you see. And so um, um, that's the way you have to do it. Um, and it's a great way to make a donation if you want to if you want to donate uh, uh, subscribe just as a donation it certainly helps um, for more information watch uh, back to the topic at hand um, for more information watch the US citizen is a slave video the social security number is a badge of slavery video the do-it-yourself how to get compensation for labor video the all wars are commercial transactions video it's it's all commerce is warfare, and all warfare is commerce. 
a U.S. Citizens and Enemy of the State video, and United States is owned and operated by the Roman Cult video. Um, so if you're going through the collection process on any loan, you, you have to understand what's happening and how to protect yourself. And just have to remember that these people are thieves, okay? They are thieves. Uh, um, they're Satanists. You're literally in a contract with the devil is, in my opinion, that's exactly where it's going, okay? That's exactly what's going on. So you get harassing phone calls, letters, threats, negative information on the credit report. Well, the first thing I would do is change the phone number. Matter of fact, I know lots of people that change their phone number every year just as a matter of course because uh, because of the NSA doing all the tracking and crap, and so they want to make sure they want their privacy, and I don't blame them a bit, and, and I do some of that. I don't necessarily change it every year, but but uh, I've had actually people at Verizon tell me that uh, a lot of people change their phone number every year. <laughs> Anyways, and uh, so you get the harassment, and you get ultimately you get a demand letter with a with a mortgage or a car loan, uh, any kind of secured uh, mortgage or loan. That's what they're going to do is they're going to send you a demand letter and threaten to sue you, and um, with um, with um, uh, actually, with car loans and mortgages, some states have these non-judicial foreclosures, and so, so, uh, uh, but they're still going to send you a demand letter. Um, anyways, um, and then there'll be a lawsuit and a judgment, and and there's potential that uh, if there's a judgment in place, uh, they'll that be in place for seven years or ten years. I'm not sure which one of the two, but after a while, it, the thing all disappears. I can tell you, <laughs> believe me. And then there's seizures, okay? And uh, but they only seize th things that are owned by the SISTK Trust, and that's important, okay? And so these are all keys on how to protect yourself from these thieves. Um, but one thing they'll do is they'll assault you with one of their bail priests, okay? All bar members are bail priests. Um, this is taken from Book 7 of Corpus Juris Secundum, uh, Section 4, on attorneys. He is, however, in a sense, an officer of the state with an obligation to the court. Uh, his first duty is to the courts and, not, and to the public, not to the client. And whenever his duties to his client conflict with those as an officer of the court and the administration of justice, the former must yield to the latter. But they're all Satanists, okay? So for the right kind of money, they'll really work for you. Uh, uh, but unless you pay them the right kind of money, they'll just put on the charade that they're working for you and they'll be stabbing you in the back is what the way it works, okay? And so clients are also called wards of the court. And um, so what they do is, is um, they, um, uh, they convert you. You have to understand that if you're a client, if you're a lawyer, uh, a client of a lawyer, uh, a, a bar member, then you are a ward of the court. And a ward of the court is an imbecile, okay? And so that's why I say they assault you with their liars, okay? Because they are liars, okay? They get up and testify when they have no firsthand knowledge of anything. That, that's the definition of a liar. Uh, wards of the court are infants of, and persons of unsound mind. That's Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. Um, a ward of the court's an imbecile. A ward of the court is not competent. Everything is about competence and incompetence. That's why they're representing you, because you're not competent to make decisions for yourself. Therefore, the attorney's going to make the decisions for you. There's no such thing as an incompetent sovereign. Do you know who you are? When a bar member sends you a letter, they're representing you, they're accusing you of being an imbecile. That's what they're doing. Think about it. That's exactly what they're doing. They're saying, oh, this guy's an imbecile. I'm going to send him a letter. <laughs> Another advertisement, other videos, Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3, Churchianity Series, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1, 2, and 3, do it yourself. How not to volunteer for the selective service and the draft. Martial laws here. Do it yourself. Uh, uh, no income tax. Do it yourself. No sales tax. Do it yourself. Traffic stops. One, two, and one and two. Do it yourself. Free mail. Do it yourself. Kangaroo courts. One, two, three, four, and five. 
and um, so check out some of my other videos uh, knowledge is power and once you understand a lot of this stuff is really pretty basic and so once you understand what's going on and how it's happening it's easily defeated actually once you understand it and and you, the real solution is is don't play in their sandbox okay it's all their sandbox. If you want to play in their sandbox, then you get to suffer the consequences. Everything, there's a consequence, whether it's a good consequence or a bad consequence. So if you don't play in their sandbox, then you won't have to suffer the consequences. Back to the topic at hand. So, alternative one. Okay, this is the first alternative as dealing with any kind of uh, a bank loan uh, and theft okay by the thieves um, uh, sure if they send you when they send you the bank letter uh, the demand letter so then you say sure no problem you can sue me but I intend to prove that you did not loan me anything and I intend to call an officer of the bank and a CPA on the stand and ask them to enclose 160 questions and prove that you did not loan me anything if you did actually loan me a depositor's money please have an officer of the bank sign the enclosed affidavit and I'll reconsider my position and I have actually done this, and it worked great. Uh, when I did this, after about three months, I got a letter from the bank uh, uh, back from the liars, actually. No, actually, that one was from the bank. The bank, actually. And it was a statement is what it was. And it showed that the account had been paid off. <laughs> it's amazing how that works. Now, you have to understand that timing is everything with this demand letter when you respond, okay? Because... The letter, the demand letter has to be from liars, okay? It can't be some letter from the bank, okay? It's got to be from liars, okay? And, and you respond to the liars, okay? Because, because if you respond to the bank, then they are... Um, you're responding to a fictitious entity. You're participating in fraud. There's nobody in the bank that you can hold responsible, okay? The liars all have bar member licenses to practice law and so they can be held responsible and they can be disbarred and which is exactly what will happen if if it turn comes out in court that they could have settled this matter and and they went ahead and filed the lawsuit anyways then then they'll get disbarred that's exactly what will happen they'll be viewed as abusing the system and all the rest of it and they'll get disbarred and so so, um, yeah, they don't want that to happen. You basically force them. They have to uh, basically make this thing go away because, again, they're working for the court. They're not working for the bankster thieves. But they're going to do everything they can to, uh, to uh, uh, help the bankster thieves. But if you get proof that, uh, that, uh, that they're doing that and, and if they went ahead and filed the lawsuit, you'd have proof. Cause you got, and that's another reason you sent it by registered mail. Um, and it must be threatening lawsuit and demanding payment in full. Now, with a secured asset, they may still steal the asset, like a house or a car or something like that. That there's a secure, uh, a secured so-called loan, uh, then then they may still steal it um, because this has worked great with unsecured debt, alleged debt. But um, if there's if it's secured then, then uh, I, you know, I can't guarantee anything. I've never tried it with something secured. So let's go to alternative two. And this is the other alternative, um, is use your dissolve, the dissolve your debt manual. It uses the accepted for value procedure. It's available on my Yahoo group in the files directory. Uh, it could also be used with a demand letter. Um, I've used it, uh, and other people I know have used it successfully. Um, and it's been uh, according to the manual, and I know people that have used it successfully with utilities, the, the bankster alleged debt, uh, taxes of all kinds. Um, so, so the bottom line is, is that uh, um, that is another alternative. Um, the, uh, the thing to understand is that these people, um, oh, another thing. Um, I would never, ever, ever file bankruptcy, okay? 
with bankruptcy you have to just lay out you have to lay out all your financial situation on the table either that or i mean it's fraud okay they'll put you in jail if you don't put it all on there and um, with bankruptcy you have a trustee sticking their nose into your financial affairs and a bankruptcy lasts for seven years okay if you just walk away from the debt if they steal whatever they're gonna steal um um it, that still only lasts for seven years, okay? After seven years or 10 years, it, it disappears off your credit report. Actually, the bankruptcy, I think, lasts for 10 years. I mean, uh, so so why on earth would you go and, and just bear it all to some trustee, to the, these, the, these judicial whores, when, when you, just, you, just, you just walk away from it, protect yourself, the only the only problem is, is if you're if you're working and you're in a W two situation, I mean they might try and steal your compensation. So I mean there's there's but even even then, with the bankruptcy, um, I, you know I cannot think of any situation where um, where bankruptcy is a desirable alternative. Maybe if you're a government employee and you never ever want to leave that job, you know maybe, but. Um, but that's about the only time. Um, otherwise, I would never, um, uh, never file bankruptcy. And believe me, uh, I've been in ups and downs all my life. And, um, and so I've had lots of situations that have come up. I was actually thinking about bankruptcy one time. And, uh, and that was when I had about 10 or 12 credit cards and they were all maxed out. And, and I decided not to do it. And, uh, and some of them actually sued me. And uh, so there was judgments, and all of that means absolutely nothing if you have yourself set up properly, okay? I can tell you, I never, ever had anything seized. Um, yeah, absolutely. Well, the only thing I had stolen from me was a house one time when I was uh, uh, back in, like, 2006. And I could have made the payments on it, but, uh, but um, the problem was is that... Um, you know, I had faith that uh, that my public servants would honor the roast and all of that, and and they didn't. They perjured the roast, and it's not over. Okay, I guarantee you, it's not over. And uh, and it was a feeding frenzy at that time. I had the IRS coming after me. I had all sorts of stuff going down. That's when I filed a lawsuit against the IRS and took them to the Supreme Court the first time. I mean, there was a bunch of things going on then. It's like a feeding frenzy sometimes. So I certainly empathize with how some of you people out there are, um, uh, what you're going through. I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt, and um, and um, so I I understand completely what it's like, and that's why I say I would never file bankruptcy, and uh, it will it will be difficult for a period of time. I mean, bankruptcy is difficult for a period of time, but uh, and it sticks on your. Uh, your 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 credit report. Anytime you fill out a credit card application, that's one of the questions they ask if you ever filed bankruptcy. Well, I say no because I haven't, <laughs> and um, and I would never do it. Um, and and if you protect yourself, um, there's nothing for them to steal, anyways. You have to understand that these people are satanists. Okay, this is all warfare. See the uh, all. All warfare is a commercial transaction, and and all commerce is warfare, and all warfare is commerce. These people are thieves. The Roman cult is a gang of thieves. You are literally in a contract with the devil, and the devil wants his five pounds of flesh. And if you protect yourself properly, he's not going to get it. Wah, wah, wah. When some people move out of a foreclosed home, they take the fixtures and punch holes in the walls and destroy everything in there. Now, I'm not sure that I would do that, but I understand completely, and I don't blame them a bit because this is warfare, okay? These people are thieves. Keep very little property in the Sesta K Trust name. Use an intervivos trust. That's a trust that's created while living. And... Um, you know, there's all sorts of things you can do with a little bit of forethought, but you have to put some forethought into it. And just because you're not having some difficulties right now doesn't mean you're not going to have difficulties a year from now or five years from now. And the further in advance you put, you you make arrangements and and put things into into structures and things like that, 
the more powerful it becomes. And you get used to operating these structures and learning how they work. And, and, and it's, it's an extremely liberating to know that, go ahead, sue me. Make my day. I, there's nothing to take. <laughs> Matter of fact, these liars, they go and do asset searches. They can they have websites where they can find out if you own anything. And and if you don't own anything, they're not even going to bother in the first place. <laughs> they're nothing but a bunch of thieves. All right. Well, I hope this helps you. And uh, copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants. I have YouTube videos that are videos of private information shares that show these and other court citations that are available for a donation. Donations support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept IOUs, Federal Reserve notes, PayPal gifts, checks, money orders, uh, etc. Send me an email for particulars. And this last paragraph is for all the Satanist order follower revenue officers operating in their private capacity because I prefer gold or silver coin. But I can, as an extremely less desirable alternative, accept the, the, your commercial paper. But I don't want it. I'd rather have gold or silver coin. Anyways, have a great day. Oh, and my uh, uh, blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email is engineerwin at yahoo. My YouTube profile is Sovereign Living and Sovereignty International. Two of them now. I got a Facebook community page, which I deleted due to censorship on the part of Facebook. My private group called Sovereignty International is being deleted. My Yahoo private group is called Administering Your Public Servants, and my Google private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. Anyways, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I hope you get something out of it. I, I understand completely, you know, um, anybody that's going through these kinds of things because I've been there. And... Um, um, and that's why I'm, I'm publishing, uh, putting out these videos, because these people are thieves. They are the lowest form of life there is. The sooner we, um, we exterminate them off the face of this planet, the better, in my opinion. Um, anyways, meanwhile, we have to deal with it, don't we? And the, the real solution is to quit playing in their sandbox. And, um, and uh, you'll find how liberating that is, too. Anyways, I hope you have a real nice day, and thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe and, uh, and, uh, and watch my other videos. Have a great day.